Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Things are changing and developing really quickly right now, and I think it's really important to be able to answer the question, are you ready for what's coming? Am I ready for what's coming? And how do we figure out the correct answer to that question? We're gonna be talking about that in this video, but this is one of those videos where I think the topic is super important, but it's not visually interesting. So what we're gonna be doing during the video is I'm gonna be doing a visual tour of the homestead that we've set up here. We're gonna be going into the woods, and one thing in particular that we're gonna be discovering is, has my stream dried up? We've got a stream off in the woods. It's been getting drier and drier and drier around here. That stream may dry up, so we'll be seeing whether that happened or not. Stick around. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. What I want to talk about in this video is, are you prepared enough? Am I prepared enough for what's coming? Things are changing really quickly right now, and the, the rate of that change is going to get more and more rapid as we move towards this, uh, this change of all things that uh, you know we're moving towards at the moment. Up until now, prepping has been kind of a hobby for a lot of us. Certainly for myself, it's been a hobby. It's something that I enjoy. Uh, I've done it for the past 20 years or so, uh, sparked by events in my life that were inconvenient, that were difficult, that prompted me to want to be prepared for things. Uh, but over the past couple decades, it's really been an enjoyable hobby that I've been doing. Moving into the future, into the next decade, certainly the next two decades, I think that prepping is going to be changing from an enjoyable hobby to a necessity of life. Have you prepared enough? Have I prepared enough for what's coming? Well, how do we answer a question like that? Normally in our society, the way that we figure out like, you know, where we are is, uh, you know, how we rank in the scheme of things is exactly what I just said there, how we rank. When you rank things, you are comparing things across a spectrum, some things being at one end of the spectrum, some things being at the other end of the spectrum. Rank people in a class, you have people that got the highest grade in a class on a test, at one end, lowest grade, on the other end. Uh, we uh, will oftentimes kind of adjust that spectrum if the teacher did a really lousy job teaching and everybody is slid down or uh, I guess depending on how you, uh, how you look at it, if you've got a really lousy class, they'll scale the grade. So if the bell curve is over here and this is kind of the sweet spot, they'll just move everybody over. But the idea is that people shift and are graded or scored or uh, rated based on how they relate to each other. And that's a fine way of doing things uh, in our system of, uh, of the world that where you know, we are competing for jobs, we are competing uh, with other people's ideas, and uh, it is man against man, or man against woman, or woman against woman, or non-binary, I guess, against non-binary, whatever the case may be. Um, you are comparing people to other people. If you want to hire someone for a job, uh, you have to get a, a person for that job. I guess you can hire it out to a machine these days, but you know, to, to not break the, the example that I'm trying to make here, you have j different job candidates, presumably all of them human, and you want to get the best one. Uh, so you choose amongst the people that you have and rank them, and you choose the best one. You can put all the angry comments you want about uh, you know quotas and all that in the, in the comments below. I'm not talking about that, I'm just talking about the idea that when you want to achieve something, get a good employee, you look at what uh, people you have and you kind of rank them. So if you are going for a job, all you really need to be uh, concerned with is are you better than uh, you know, all the other candidates. Uh, it's kind of like in nature where they say uh, if you're going to run away from the bear, you don't have to be the fastest runner, you just have to not be the slowest runner because the slowest runner is the one that gets eaten by the bear and the bear stops and eats the slowest runner. So that's the way we do things in our society, is we compare ourselves with other people, and it's pretty functional when you're trying to fill a job slot or something like that. You, you know, you get the best person that's available for it. But the challenge that we are facing right now, sure, there are going to be man against man, man against woman, you know, human against human, put it that way, uh, situations in there. But it's also human against nature. And in human against nature, uh, it's not a situation where um, you have 100 people struggling against nature and 50% of them are going to die and 50% of them are going to live. It could work out that way, uh, but it's not determined. Your survivability is not determined by whether you're on the top 
50% of that bell curve or the bottom 50% of that bell curve. Your, your ability to survive is based on whether or not you are able to survive or not. So it's not a matter of comparing yourself to the people around you. And that is the core of what I think is uh, a lot of people's problem when it comes to prepping. And here's where we get to the, the meat of this one. I know I oftentimes will kind of talk, kind of define some of my terms at the beginning of the video. Here's the core of this. For you, for me, for so many of us, and again, I include myself in this, we tend to decide whether we are good at something, whether we're uh, ready for something, based on how we relate to others. But that's not the way that this challenge is gonna work. That flies chasing after me. That's not the way that this challenge is going to work. It doesn't matter whether or not you are the best in your group of people at surviving. What matters is, are you good enough to survive to beat nature? not to beat the other candidates for the job. If you're all good enough, then you all survive. If none of you are good enough, then none of you survive. There is no bell curve. There is no grading curve. You either make the cut or you don't. And I think oftentimes people forget that that is the reality that we're moving into. Because we live in a world, like I said, where you compare yourself to others uh, based uh, on, you know, your job performance, your skill set, uh, you know, your success level, uh, people's happiness so frequently is based on how they perceive themselves uh, in terms of their success as it relates to the other people around them. If you're more successful, or it's perceived that you're more successful by you, uh, then the people around you, you tend to feel more happy. You feel more successful if, as you compare yourself to other people, you seem more successful than those people. But that's not the way surviving works. The way surviving works is, are you up to the task? So are you up to the task? Am I up to the task? Now, I keep throwing myself into this uh, pile with you guys because I don't know. You know, uh, we do mental experiments. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll go out, we'll rough it, we'll go camping. We try to test ourselves. Uh, but there are very few of us, perhaps no, no one that's watching this channel here. There are people in the world that have dealt with this type of thing, but I don't think they tend to f frequent YouTube channels about prepping and preparedness because they already lived through it and they don't want to, you know, get entertainment here on, on YouTube because uh, I know a lot of this stuff to some extent uh, is a, just pure entertainment for people on YouTube. You know, they don't need to watch it because they've been living it. There are lots of people in this world who have been living surviving, who have been living, uh, you know, preparedness, you know, because if they are not prepared, for the next day. They don't survive that next day. But the vast majority of us have not lived that way. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, all we can do is look to examples of real uh, events in history and, uh, and try to figure out whether or not we are up to the task. I know a lot of us, in, in terms of how we decide to live our lives, uh, is based on like, well, how much is enough? Uh, you know, for me, I, what I do, it's pretty extreme. You know, I've moved out uh, into the woods. I'm really far from other people. I've got a, like, a, a totally off-grid house. You know, the power can go out and we're fine. And we've got a root cell and a fall shelter. We got all this stuff. That's really extreme. It's extreme because it's extreme as related to other people. Uh, is it extreme because it's way more than you would need to survive? I don't know. Maybe it's way too little. So the only real way that you can decide whether or not you're going to make the cut or not uh, is comparing yourself to other historical events, not comparing yourself to the people around you, because I know here in the echo chamber on YouTube, uh, you know, we all have a tendency of uh, kind of comparing ourselves to, you know, the jokers out there. You know, here on YouTube, there's like, the, you know, the armchair warriors and, you know, they're clearly not prepared or there's like the, the kind of the masses of, of sheeple, as some people call them, that are, are clearly not prepared. And, uh, you know, for a lot of us, we feel like, well, if we've, if we've got like 10 more pounds of rice than those people, we must be prepared because we're, we're so much better than that. But again, that's thinking in terms of grading on a curve. And there is no curve. There's either you've got enough materials, you have enough skills, you have enough knowledge, or you don't. So what do you do? How do you decide whether you are prepared enough? I've made the suggestion we have to look to history. We have to look to history to see people that have lived through these types of situations, lived through wars, lived through famines, lived through droughts, all, <laughs> it sounds like the evening news uh, lately. People that have lived through all these types of things. What were, these, what were the skill sets that got people through? What were the preparations that got people through those types of things? You can't compare yourself to the people that are around you in a society 
you know, especially like the society that we live in here, and say, because you are, you know, twice as prepared as all these people, you're going to make it. Because you're three times, four times, five times, ten times, a hundred times more prepared than all these people, you're going to make it. That is not how these challenges are decided. That's not how uh, these uh, challenges are going to be overcome. They're going to be overcome by whether you have enough skills, enough materials, enough knowledge to make it through. And there's no way that you can know that unless you look to real people who've gone through it, not comparing yourself to all the other jokers around you because our society is full of jokers. It is full of people that are in real, real, real trouble when the situation that we have been living in for the past many decades begins to dissolve away. And it will begin to dissolve away. And it is becoming popularly accepted that it will begin to dissolve away. World leaders are talking about the change from what we have known to what is coming. I don't think the civilians, I don't think that the citizens within the countries where these leaders uh, reside are really internalizing what is being announced by world leaders. And the fact that the world leaders themselves are beginning to say these things says a lot because right up until the very end, leaders are always trying to tell people, it's okay, it's okay, it'll be fine, don't worry. Think about Ukraine just recently. I've just gotten this video flagged by probably using that term. But just think about the situation there. You were crazy, you were delusional, you were paranoid if you suggested that the Russians were gonna come in. It was, it, it was joked about. Uh, Zelensky was joking about it right up until the very end. Uh, now it's a fact of life. The fact that world leaders are now openly even discussing this stuff tells you how close we are. Tick, tick, tick. We are getting close. It has been a hobby to do prepping for a long time. It's been an enjoyable hobby. hobby. It's improved so many parts of my life, uh, not just in terms of convenience and it's like, oh, you know, crap, I, I ran out of flour, but I didn't because I'm a prepper. Or, crap, I you know locked myself out of the house, but I didn't because I got a key outside because I'm a prepper. Um, it's, it's improved my life uh, just in, in the sense that I feel as though I'm ready for tomorrow and I don't have to split my brain into uh, you know pairs of opposites and experience this kind of cognitive dissonance, even though I'm constantly accused by people of, of living in a state of cognitive dissonance. Um, doing pretty well for someone who's living in a delusional state, a lot better than a lot of the people who tend to accuse me of it, it would seem. Prepping and preparedness has improved my, lives, my life in so many, my lives, okay, we're getting, we're getting into Buddhism here, um, uh, in so many different ways. It has been a wonderful aspect to my life over the last 20 years or so. It has, uh, you know, just made everything uh, smoother, more enjoyable, less stressful. Uh, and it has um, prepared me for a lot of things. But overall, it's, over the past couple decades, the, 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 the most tangible quality of it is that it has been enjoyable. That's great. But moving forward, it's going to be less of something that you do to enjoy your life and more of something that you need to do in order to earn the privilege to continue living your life. So start taking it seriously. We are getting very close to that pole shift not just the, you know, the magnetic one, but the pole shift in our world where things go from a world of plenty to the alternative to that, to the, to the world that people have been warning us about for such a long time. People have been warning us that the world has been changing for a while. Now the people see it, a lot of people, you know, in the conspiracy groups are saying, you know, they, they, they were warning us because they, uh, you know, wanted to hide the truth in plain sight or because, uh, you know, they couldn't keep the secret and, uh, and the, the secret kept uh, slipping out, but, you know, they're causing all these changes. That suggests a degree of control that I think is probably comforting to a lot of people. You know, the Illuminati are controlling everything, you know, you know whatever, whatever happens in the end, at least, at least people are, are holding the reins to it. Um, I don't believe that. I think that chaos is in the driver's seat of all this. Uh, we're all pretty much along for the ride. Some of us have more control uh, over our uh, surroundings than others, uh, certainly, uh, you know, based on people's, uh, you know, means or based on people's uh, foresight. Uh, certainly that is the case. Uh, but I believe that chaos is the primary driver of all of this. And the outcome is not ultimately going to be decided by human beings at all. It'll be desi uh, desi designed by us collectively 
uh, but not by an elite, not by uh, you know some small group that uh, is going to direct things uh, in the way that they see fit. It's going to happen based on our collective actions and the realities of nature, and uh, it could be more terrifying than any of us would possibly want to contemplate. So are you ready? Think about whether you're ready. Do some research to decide whether you're ready. And if you're not, and you're probably not, because I know I'm not, and I'm way more ahead than a lot of the people that view this channel, not everybody, but a lot of the people that view this channel, I'm seen as being you know, pretty far ahead in this stuff. I still got a ways to go. There are lots of things that I need to check off my list of things to do. I've accomplished a lot of them, but there are so many more left to do. Uh, surviving on your own or surviving in a small community it's really hard work. Look, again, look through history. It's not a cakewalk. You know, our lives over the past several decades have been a cakewalk to the way that they have been in the past. It would be great if we could continue them as they've been into the future. I think if we'd managed it better, we, we almost certainly could have. We didn't manage it very well, so, you know, we have to deal with what we have to deal with. So decide whether you're going to be able to deal with it and get serious about it because we're getting pretty close, I think. That's it. Thanks for watching and good luck. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.